Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we are here today because of your love for us and because of that we are extremely blessed. We are so blessed by you, O God. And so we ask that as we take time to read the Bible, your word to us, that you would speak a message that works into our hearts and souls, a message that lifts us up to you, a message that encourages us and challenges us to keep following you. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning is from Mark chapter 1. Uh, We're starting a series throughout the month of June called The Cycle of Discipleship. And inside your bulletin, um, on the inside, is a listing of all the different scripture passages and titles for this series throughout the month. Uh, So you can follow along as we are reading our way through the Gospel of Mark. So I invite you to to be reading through the the Gospel of Mark um, each week as we are on this journey of discovering Jesus' uh, cycle of discipleship. So it starts in Mark chapter 1, and we'll read verses 1 through 20. So Mark 1, starting with verse 1. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Uh, Just a note there. The word gospel, um, we don't use it too often in our ordinary language outside a church, but the word gospel just means good news. It's an old English word, uh, and a gospeler is somebody who would tell good news. So it just means good news, and later on in the passage, we'll encounter the same word, and it's good news. So this is the beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. And he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water... He saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my Son, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the desert. And he was in the desert forty days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals And angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The cycle of discipleship starts with seeing what Jesus sees. So I have a picture here that I'd like to show you. And I'm going to ask you, what do you see? This picture has been around for decades. And many of you have seen it before. But what do you see? A young woman 
Some see a young woman. And someone sees an old woman. The interesting thing about this picture is that it is one picture with two different images in it. And we can see things from different points of view. There's the image of the old woman and the image of the young woman. This picture shows us that we can see different things in the same picture. But what it also teaches that we can see different things in the same person. And when Jesus looks at you, he sees something different than what others see. Jesus sees differently. So in the story, in Mark chapter 1, Jesus is walking by the Sea of Galilee, and he saw Simon and Andrew, and he saw James and John. What Jesus did not see was four young men fishing. That's not what Jesus saw. Jesus looked at those four young men in their boats, and he saw disciples. He saw students who would learn from him. Jesus saw future world leaders in those four young men in the boats. Now, I want to take a moment and share a little bit about the Jewish educational system at the time of Jesus. Because this is important for us to understand. At the time of Jesus, elementary school was basically a place where all kids could go and they would learn the Torah, which involves the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. In elementary school, you memorized the whole Torah. When you finished elementary school, you went to middle school. And again, all kids could go to middle school. And in middle school, they learned interpretations of the Torah. They learned to read what other rabbis or teachers had written down about the Torah and be able to explain those interpretations. Then when they get to high school, things change. Elementary school, middle school is basically you would have a teacher or they called them a rabbi and the students could all gather around the rabbi and one rabbi might have 20, 30, 40 students depending on the size of the village. But when it came to high school, things were different. The student had to ask the rabbi or teacher if he or she could be a student. So, if you wanted to get into high school, you'd have to go up to a rabbi and say, Rabbi, I would like to be your disciple. And the rabbi would then interview you to figure out whether or not you would be a good disciple. Basically, what the rabbi wanted to figure out was, can this person become a rabbi like me? Can this person, can this student become like me? So they'd ask questions like, recite for me Leviticus chapters 15 and 16. And the student would do that. Okay, now give me Rabbi Akiva's interpretation of Leviticus 15 and 16. And the student would have to do that. And the interview would go on with with questions like that. And at the end of it, the rabbi had to make a decision. Can this student become like me? Become a rabbi like me? And if the answer is yes then the rabbi would say, yes, you can come follow me. You can come be my disciple. And if they thought, no, this student does not have the potential to become like me, they'd say, no, yeah, sorry, you're going to have to ask someone else. Back to the story. Peter and Andrew, James and John, are fishing. We need to ask the question, why are they fishing? And the answer is not just because it's their chosen profession. The answer is not just because that's what their fathers did. The answer is no rabbi accepted them as a student. No rabbi believed in them that they could become a rabbi just like that rabbi. So they went to one rabbi and asked, and that one said no, and another one said no, and another one said no, and eventually their dads just said, you know... I didn't make it into high school either. Why don't you come fishing with me? And so they go fishing with the dad. No rabbi 
believed in them. So now here comes Jesus walking along the Sea of Galilee. And we've got to remember, Jesus sees differently. And he saw Peter and Andrew. He saw James and John. But he didn't see just four men fishing. He did not see four high school rejects. He saw students with the potential to become a rabbi, just like Jesus is a rabbi. And so when Jesus calls them to follow him, he essentially looks them in the eye and says to them, I believe in you. I believe in you. You can become like me. I believe in you. You can become like me. And so Peter and Andrew, James and John, they jump up out of the boats. They're wowed. Finally, a rabbi believes in me. I can become a rabbi. Fishing's gone. Woohoo! They're excited. That's why immediately they jump up. They jump out of the boat. They take off. See ya, Dad. Good riddance. I'm going to high school. Jesus sees differently. And Jesus still sees differently today. Jesus sees each one of you in a very deep way. And he sees more than the surface. He sees more than your outward accomplishments. He sees more than your failures or your pride. He sees more than your insecurities or your fears. He sees more than your career or the jobs you've held. He sees more than your aspirations and your hopes. Jesus sees more than all that. He looks into you and he sees potential in you of someone who can do things in his name. He sees, he sees in you someone who can speak the good news in his name. So Jesus looks at each one of you and he sees you very differently than everyone else on planet earth. And he says, I believe in you. I believe in you. You can become like me. Jesus sees differently. I believe in you. You can be my disciple. You can step out in faith. I believe in you. You can be a teacher. I believe in you. You can be an elder or a deacon. I believe in you that you can be an engineer. I believe in you that you can be a good parent. I believe in you that you can be a good student. I believe in you. Jesus looks at each one of you and he says, I believe in you. I believe in you. You can do it. But we got to remember, there's someone else out there who's constantly whispering something. And you've been hearing the whispers your whole life because Satan whispers in your heart and soul. And Satan whispers these two destructive words. You can't. You can't. You can't do that. You're not going to measure up. You're going to fail. You can't. And Satan has been whispering those words your whole life. You can't. And you've believed these lies for years. You've felt inadequate for a long time. You have felt looked over and inconsequential because Satan speaks lies But here's the good news. Here's the good news. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is the Holy Spirit that is at work in you than the spirit of this age, Satan. And Jesus, he looks at you and he speaks truth. He looks into you and says, I believe in you. You can do it. Jesus looks at you and says, come, follow me. You can do it. Jesus looks at you and says, I believe in you. I will show you how to do it. I will teach you how to do it. Come follow me. Spend time with me. And you will learn from me how to do it. Those are Jesus' words to you. The cycle of discipleship. It begins with Jesus' call to you. The cycle of discipleship begins with Jesus calling you and saying, I believe in you. You can follow me. You can do it. You can speak good news in my name. You can do good works in my name. I believe in you. That's 
how the, the cycle of discipleship begins. This morning, we are going to receive new members into the life of our congregation. And each of them has been called by God to follow Jesus. Each of them has heard the voice of Jesus saying to them, I believe in you, you can do it. And they responded and said, okay, I will follow you. Jesus believes in each one of you that you can speak his word and you can do his work. Not on your own strength, not on your own power, but by the strength of the power of God at work in you. Jesus believes in you. Don't believe the lies of Satan. Believe Jesus. I believe in you, he says. I invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you believe in us. Because there are so many other voices telling us that we're going to fail. We're not going to measure up. We're not going to be able to do it. But you, Lord Jesus, speak a voice of truth. Your truth of how you see us. That in us, you see men, women, children with the potential to become like you. And so I pray for each person here, whether they've been following you as Christians for a few days or several decades. God, I believe, I, I pray that they would, they would hold on to that belief that you believe in them they'd embrace it and welcome it. That they would stop listening to the lies of Satan and believe you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for believing in us. Thank you for calling us to be your disciples. Thank you for sending, out, sending us out to speak your word and to do your work. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.